American writer Orson Seward Martin once said, Forests, lakes, and rivers, clouds and winds, stars and flowers, stupendous glaciers, crystal and crystal snowflakes. Every form of animate or inanimate existence leaves the impress upon the soul of man. When I told my parents the topic of my speech was to be connecting with nature, they both chuckled. My mom said, kids today don't connect with nature, unless there's an app for that. Then my parents started to entertain me with stories from the, their childhood. They both told me that they went for long bike rides, or adventures my mom liked to call them. My mom and the other neighborhood kids would build forts from boxes given to them by the local furniture store owners. They would even sleep in these forts. <laughs> there were wiffle ball and kickball games in the vacant lot. Her parents would take the family to Prickett's Fort for a picnic and feed the ducks. My dad said he was outside not just in the summer, but all year round. The, win the snow in winter gave them a perfect setting for a snowball war with the kids across for with the kids on the other side of King Street. There was no reason to be inside. They both concurred until it was time to sleep. Nature and the outdoors were one big playground. They would chew onion grass and spit grain, use sticks as fishing poles, swords, or limbo sticks. They said t kids today have too many inside alternatives, such as hundreds of TV channels, cell phones, computers, and video games. This probably attributed to the increase in childhood obesity, but also a lack of understanding and appreciation for nature. English poet William Wordsworth said, come forth into the light of things. Let nature be your teacher. Despite my parents' upbringing, I'm not a real outdoorsy type and never thought too much about things that I could do to make sure that the world outside would be a playground for my kids, grandkids, and other and for all future generations. Things changed for me when I visited my aunt and uncle in Seattle. The West Coast has a very progressive attitude towards environmentalism and requires citizens to take an, act, an active role. My aunt is a great role model for my whole family. She and my uncle recycle all things possible, glass, plastic, and paper. They have a rain barrel and use the contents to water their garden. She uses washcloths as napkins and uses her own bags when shopping. My aunt volunteered for several, for several projects that helped increase awareness uh, of alternative energy sources. They have shown me that it doesn't take huge actions to make a difference. Due to her influence, I am seriously considering a future in environmental law. I know some may dispute the negative impact people have had on our, our natural environment, and I'm not here to preach but I definitely feel better safe than sorry. British, British statesman John Lubick said, Earth and sky, woods and fields, lakes and rivers, the mountains and the sea are excellent schoolmasters and teach some of us more than we can ever learn from books. Of course, how can, our, how can kids our age and younger feel responsible for helping the environment if they aren't outside connecting with it? One suggestion I have is to start in the schools. Kids spend 180 days of the year learning about various subjects. I think there's a way to combine this learning with connecting to nature. If schools can institute technology requirements, why not environmental requirements? Some examples might be a science lab outside testing the water quality from nearby creeks or streams, a math class measuring the area of a school building, an English class writing a haiku of what the, about what they see. In history, they can create a map using chalk or painter's tape, or just taking a class outside for their regular lesson. Kids need to, once again, see the magic that nature can provide, and there is no app for that. I think the opening of Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree beautifully expresses the joy and love we can feel from connecting with nature. Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play the f king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk, swing from her branches, and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek, and when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. Unfortunately, the boy's love for the tree and nature wanes as he grows, and his connection with the tree no long is no longer magical, but selfish needs, and, selfish and selfishly, the tree obliges. 
Inevitably, the boy returns to the tree at an old age, too tired to need anything more than a place to sit, and the tree obliges. Connecting with nature is not only good for humans, but for nature as well. Thank you.